As people, we never questioned the food we ate, because we ate what was given to us, and we ate for survival. Whether that's buying from the store or ordering out, we always think about how we are in control of what we eat and what goes inside our bodies. But what if I told you that there's more to food than just giving us sustenance? What if I told you that the food we eat affects how we are programmed? Food is a major part of our health and nutrition, arguably the most important factor. It's no surprise that many people pay attention to their diet and what they consume. Despite this, obesity rates are at an all-time high, and malnutrition still remains prevalent in certain areas of the world. Much of this is linked to the fact that the majority of diet now is composed of instant food. Instant noodles, instant coffees, ready-made food. Real food that used to be cooked from scratch in the kitchen is now available to be purchased in just add water pouches and boxes. It's obvious that these products affect the human body nutritionally, but have you ever thought about how it can affect us in more ways than one? Amino acids are readily found in fruits and vegetables. These types of food are easier to digest and are optimal to the human digestive tract. On the contrary, proteins from meat have to be broken down into amino acids by the body, which make it harder to absorb. This conversion costs our body lots of energy that can rather be used in doing different activities in our daily lives. Do you know that humans can also be programmed through their diet? All types of plants can alter our moods and emotions. Herbs, vegetables, tea leaves, and plant roots all contribute in playing a part in human programmability. For some people, a cup of green tea is enough to act as a stimulant, while some consume kombucha to alter their mood and even their perception of time. Some plants can even be used to bypass heavier emotions such as grief, sorrow, sadness, or melancholy by artificially inducing an external layer of emotion linked to playfulness, for example. These plants, if used correctly, have the power to assist humans in living an easier life. We just have to know how to utilize them. When a person's immune system is strong, their resistance against conditions and diseases strengthens. It's easier to deal with what happens in our daily life when we feel healthy and strong in both body and mind, compared to when in a low-frequency state. Fasting is a good practice in order to introduce new thought patterns, reprogram beliefs, and release trauma. It can be difficult to begin, but the clarity that follows is definitely worth the discomfort. A grocery or a supermarket is a one-stop shop for anything and everything a person might need for both cooking and eating, from fruits to vegetables, poultry to meat. What anyone can hope for is an arm's length away. With the emergence of canned food and easy-to-prep instant meals, is there actually any merit other than a slight sustenance boost when buying fresh? These instant products are cheaper and easier to prepare, saving both time and money on the consumer's end. Because of this, food manufacturers mostly focus on being able to produce quick and cheap items to satisfy the demand. But by doing that, one important aspect greatly suffers, keeping food healthy. While the demand for food is being met, it seems like the food industry has long lost its main role to keep the population healthy. In fact, four out of 10 killer diseases are food-related problems. This raises the question, is the same industry feeding us the same one killing us? Man has inevitably adopted a diet that is detrimental to our health. But there's a way to go back to a healthier lifestyle that our ancestors were used to when it comes to eating. Through technological advancements, mankind has unlocked the power of preservation and mass production, all at the expense of keeping food items fresh, healthy, and nutritious. But the question becomes, is this trade-off worth it? When the word vegan is thrown around, the human brain often associates it with being healthy. However, living a truly vegan lifestyle is difficult to achieve. There is a better alternative to veganism. It's living a mucus-free lifestyle. The vegan lifestyle did let go of meat, but these people still need proteins through alternative sources that may be harmful for the body. 
Spirulina, a biomass of cyanobacteria, for example, is high in protein, but it doesn't mean humans should abuse it and rely on it solely. In comparison, a mucus-free or even a mucus-lean lifestyle actually allows the body to absorb, retain, and translate as much energy as it can without having to resort to alternatives. This goes without saying, but not everything we consume is good. Some, in great amounts, can be detrimental to our health. A great way to cleanse the body is through detoxification, ridding one's body of all harmful substances and toxins ingested. What truly detoxifies the body is fasting. Liquid fasting, for example, is a great way to begin filtering these toxins out of one's body. To start, take note of how your body reacts to certain foods. You'll notice that there are particular foods that give your mind clarity, while some cause specific reactions from you. For example, agave syrup or cane sugar can produce a little bit of teeth grinding. Contrary to popular belief, honey is also not the optimal food for humans when consumed in certain amounts whereas the natural sugars from fruits is not a problem. Flushing your body's system from toxins and other negative substances helps it release obstruction and wastes that are in the way for the charges in your body to circulate freely. Detoxing is a process that may be hard to begin, but the results from doing so are amazing. However, it's not a simple process, and there's a lot of things that can go against one that's new to the process. Because of this, the detox community is a tight-knit community that helps each member out. The detox community dissuades so-called controlled agents, which are food items that are clogging, such as garlic, onions, soy sauce, tamari, nuts, etc. Instead, the detox community tends to put emphasis on vegetables instead of fruits and promote heavy use of oil as a way of cleansing. It's important to be wary of these pretentious health enthusiasts that do not actually promote a healthy diet. Rather, they cause more harm than good. Being more in tune with your body's needs and recognizing the power you have from within is the key to achieving a holistically better you. Many actors, from food manufacturers to health influencers, and even some medical professionals, sometimes harm your body more by introducing unnatural materials to it. Instead of healing, these chemically induced substances may even cause damage. It's said that the world is already equipped with whatever we might need to survive, which brings us to the topic of wild plants. Nettles are good for regenerating the blood and managing sugar levels, while dandelions have a good amount of calcium and vitamin C. Daisies may be used to help the body be firmer in specific areas, and adding some leaves of wild medicinal plants to a soup is going to potentialize it. Leaves of nettles, dandelions, or plantains may be incorporated in sauces with a little bit of ginger or turmeric. They can also be incorporated into dried preparations with some spinach as well. Collecting wild medicinal leaves such as from raspberry bushes to prepare hot beverages during the colder season is also another alternative to potentialize our health. These natural healers are widely available in nature, and there is little to no chance that the food industry who incorporates unnatural food additives will be able to taint them, especially if you harvest them yourself. Aside from plants, essential oils are also great to treat ailments. Humans can rub specific points of the body that feel heavy, for example, our wrists or our shoulders, where people usually experience stress and trauma. Applying essential oils externally will feed its way internally, thereby lessening stress from the specific area from the outside in. There are different oils for different needs, some of which specifically help aid certain illnesses, such as the green myrrh essential oil, which helps in case of hypothyroidism. The current food industry has been very unkind to man. It's harmed today's people in terms of nutrition, thinking, and even reasoning. The workarounds the food industry has done in order to sell more of their cheaper, unhealthier products at the expense of the consumer's well-being should be frowned upon. But it's a reality hard to escape, especially in a continuously evolving world. However, humans have a choice. Whether they partake in this unhealthy cycle or break away from the cycle 
and reprogram themselves back to a healthier version of themselves. Going natural and detoxifying are some of the few ways people can revert back to a healthier version of themselves internally. While the process is hard, we can always reprogram ourselves to go back to our natural ways. You simply just have to decide to do so.